know, you get rid of your toxic relationships, you eat healthy, you take care of yourself, you quit your bad habits, and, and you're wondering why. You know, you do ayahuasca, you do a past life regression, you do mushrooms, you go to therapy, you tap on it, you go to hypnotherapy, you do everything, and you're like, why am I still fucked? If you hate your life, do this. Admit it. Hey guys, welcome back to Taylor Television. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. And thank you so much for being here with me. If you're new to the channel, I am so glad that you found it. I will consistently be making helpful videos for you guys to share what I've been through and help you in your journey. I am reinventing my entire life. The only thing I've ever wanted to do in my life is be a YouTuber because I love making videos to help people. It took a very deep healing journey to clear out a lot of self-hatred that was stopping me from being able to show up in this space. I have been through a really, really hard life. I have gotten to a point of healing where I really feel like I can offer you guys some insights from my own experience that can help you or maybe just give you food for thought. You just never know what will click. And it took a long time for everything to click for me. I wanna make videos helping things click for people the way that all the YouTubers have made videos helping it click for me. YouTube legitimately saved my life. Like the amount of therapy and just girl talk and just, I'll cry so I don't wanna keep talking about it, but YouTube is amazing and it's such an amazing, <laughs> it's amazing. YouTube is an unbelievable resource and I want to bring something into the space to help people the way that people have literally like selflessly helped me through their YouTube videos. I've been through some dark, dark shit. I'm not gonna lie. I was having a lot of trouble showing up on camera because I low-key hated myself, but I didn't realize it. But I think somewhere inside of myself, I did realize it and it was like this deep well of shame. Self-hatred and shame, I don't know if they're the same thing. If not, they're like sisters. I was always trying to make these videos and every time I made a video, I would watch it back and I would hate the way that I looked and I'd hate what I was saying and I would think who would wanna hear me? I don't have anything to say. Like just all these really horrible self-doubt type things. All I've ever wanted to do in my life is be a YouTuber and to help people, really. I have really deep empathy, I am a healer, and I've only wanted to help people. I have this kind of silly Instagram, it's Taylor underscore television, if you wanna check it out. And you can message me there too. I was having a lot of trouble finding my more serious voice because it's kind of hard to like go from like, oh, woo, let's rate Celsius flavors, to like, all right, Real talk. I couldn't find my voice. I didn't have a voice. And so finally I sat down and, and I always felt like I needed to fix myself. Okay, that's really the main thing. I didn't realize it. It was years. I started this YouTube channel in 2019 and I always told myself that I would get it popped off when I lost weight. I kept having these horrible breakups with my toxic ex. I kept learning all these amazing things and I wanted to bring them to you guys so much. I have gotten so much help from YouTube, from girls on YouTube, men on YouTube, just people on YouTube offering all of the support and this help almost everything I know I learned from YouTube and I wanted so badly to be in that space and I kept making videos but I was so self-conscious and I had so much deep-seated shame about the way that I looked really I finally sat down to just admit to you guys like hey you know what I meant to be a lot hotter for all this YouTube stuff I, I meant to have a perfect house and I meant to be like this person who seems like an authority on a perfect life finally the discomfort of staying the same outweighed the discomfort of the change I just wanted to make YouTube videos for you guys so bad that I was like I have to do it ugly that's it I'm not ugly I know that I'm not ugly but I have felt ugly my entire life and I'm gonna try not to cry in the video I'm sure that a lot of you can relate to just feeling dysfunctional, misfit, and just so ugly. I can't, I just, I felt so bad about myself. It was stopping me from being able to show up for you guys. And I had this like imposter syndrome. I didn't think I had anything to offer. So finally, a couple weeks ago, I just sat down and I said, screw it. I am going to be a YouTuber and this is what I'm going to do. And I have a message. I really do have a message to bring to you guys. I know it sounds like a little bit like, whatever to say but I really believe that God gave me a purpose to come and share these messages with people and I know it's like so corny and it's so hard for me to even say that on camera but I'm just gonna say it 
it is what it is. Holding all that in me because I felt ugly and fat and feeling like I couldn't do it until I lost 20 pounds. I need to get these messages out to help other people the way that other YouTubers have gotten their message out to help me. And they've done it imperfect and they've done it with, you know, a phone like I'm doing and a $30 microphone. You know, I have all the expensive equipment. I can't figure out how to use it yet. <laughs> I'm learning, but for right now, this has got to be good enough. So I sat down and I finally admitted like, hey guys, I meant to be hotter for this. I was really afraid. I, I didn't want to give my ex the satisfaction of seeing my YouTube and seeing that I had like gained weight, I guess. I have like, I've had eating disorder history, major body dysmorphia, just real deep self-esteem issues. Finally, I, I sat down. I said, I'm just going to do this ugly. And here's the deal. Something about making that video, and I'm going to post it. Admitting I hated myself led to this like floodgates of healing and it, it was just it was the last thing it was like think about healing as an upside down triangle right you got the stuff you do up here you get rid of your toxic relationships you eat healthy you take care of yourself you quit your bad habits and and you're wondering why you know you do ayahuasca you do a past life regression you do mushrooms you go to therapy you tap on it you go to hypnotherapy you do everything and you're like why am i still fucked and then right at the bottom of that triangle it's like have you ever tried like imagine if there was like a bb at the bottom, like from a BB gun or like a really small little pellet at the bottom. You know how hard that would be to, to pick out? You'd almost have to like push your finger down on it and like stick it to your finger to get it out. That self-hatred and that shame of yourself. The thing is, the shame on top of the self-hatred, it creates like this hard shell over the self-hatred where you really can't even get to it to work through it. And so something about just coming on here to admit to you guys that I feel like I'm too fat and ugly to make YouTube videos and that's really been what's stopping me. I, I probably have seven years of content written across 200 notebooks in this room. I mean, I probably write a book every single day. I could show you, but I'm not even going to. But like notebooks after notebooks after page after page after page after page after page of ideas for you guys. I mean, what does this say right here? Oh, okay, yeah, like Dr. Robert Gilbert. The stuff I want to share with you about sacred geometry and about God and the eight key breaths and the Rosicrucian practices and, and these breathing practices that I've done and reviewing different uh, meditation devices. Like, guys, I, I have it all in here. It was just stuck inside me and when I sat down and made that video and wound up just admitting to you guys I didn't realize that I would really be admitting it to myself and I don't know how that worked because I was like oh okay it really I just really feel too fat and ugly but I'm not fat and ugly, and that's ridiculous. Yeah, I have, you know, some things to do to get in shape. I'm, I'm not as fit as I'd like. I put on a lot of body fat. It's all covered up by the hoodie. Thank you, Starfit. <laughs> Starfit New York. <laughs> Me too. I'm from New York. Yeah, I've got things to improve on, but why do I feel like I'm not worthy of the things I want in my life? Why do I think I'm not worthy of even trying or having anything just because I gained a little weight? You know, it's like so sad. And I know that a lot of people feel the same way. I don't know it personally because this is like the deepest hidden chain. People hide this from themselves. People hide this from themselves. And that is the most dangerous thing that you can do is have, no, no, no. It's not the most dangerous thing that you can do. I shouldn't say that because you're not, no one's doing it consciously. It's a very dangerous situation to have occurring to have something that's really running your life in the background hidden from you. When you know something, you can address it. You know, you put on 20 pounds, you know you put on 20 pounds and you know what you need to do. You need to eat healthier, you need to go to the gym, like that's it. But when you're like sleepwalking through your life and keep ending up in abusive relationships and all these horrible situations and just wondering like, what is it about me that is so defective that I'm not worthy of having the normal happy lives everyone else seems to be having. I was clueless. I had no idea. I really was just getting to the point where I was just like, I guess I'm just a piece of shit. Some people are born with charmed lives and I was born with a really rough life and 
I must have done something like karmically, you know, in another life or something like that. I really do believe that we choose our human life and we choose our circumstances. I think that life and earth is a, a lesson and a learning school kind of thing for your soul to ascend through different levels of consciousness. So I just figured I signed a really hard soul contract and I was here to just struggle and suffer. But I had this feeling like I need to make this fortune. And the only reason I need to make this fortune is so that I can be free and help people. I'm not materialistic. I don't care about that stuff. I want to pay off my family's houses. I want to buy my dad a new truck. I want to be able to take my family on vacation. I want my best friend to be able to, you know, buy her dream house, all that stuff. That's why I want the fortune. I want the fortune to be free. And so I'm like, maybe I was just a rich ass businessman who like exploited people in another life and now my struggle on earth is to just you know feel the need to have this fortune and just never be able to quite reach it and maybe this is like cleansing some sort of karma like I didn't know what was going on so I couldn't even address it but the thing is is that I had been taking baby steps along that triangle I gotta make a video of this triangle it's like an upside down uh hierarchy of needs by Maslow if you're familiar with that I can make a video about that if anybody's interested comment below if there's anything I'm talking about that sounds interesting that you don't know about or that you want me to make another video talking more about just leave it below in the comments and if anything I'm saying relates to you uh, if you relate to anything I'm saying let me know because I'm here to help you to grow out of this together and I want to help as many people in the world as I can figure out how to get to that little BB at the bottom of the triangle if you know what I'm saying it's really satisfying because that's like exactly what I'm talking about so here I was doing this whole upper triangle of the healing work. And yeah, I was, I was getting better. I was getting along, you know, like it, it, I was growing, I was healing, but there was just something that I couldn't quite, couldn't quite get to. And it was that self-hatred and it was covered by an armor of shame. So I was doing all this different stuff to try to feel better and it wasn't quite landing. I wanted to be a YouTuber and I wanted to bring these messages to you guys so badly that I just said, screw it. I'm just going to tell everyone I hate myself. I'm fat and I'm ugly. Okay, cool. The cat's out of the bag. Okay, my ex, James, you're watching. Cool. I fell off. I'm not that hot. Good. We have that out of the way? Like, whatever. I guess I still cared at some, on some level, which I definitely do not anymore, which you can see by me making this video. So thank you guys so much. If you're still here watching the video, I really appreciate you guys watching this kind of stream of consciousness conversation that I'm having with you. Basically, I didn't realize that I hated myself and it made it impossible to do anything about it. There were a ton, I mean, hundreds of things I did to heal to probably get to that point of feeling strong enough to confront my deepest fear, basically. Uh, you know, the fear of not measuring up, not being good enough, not being able to reach my goals, not being lovable, just having a bad life. I really had to face my darkest, most shameful thing. I was so ashamed that I hated myself. And then I also felt at the same time that my imposter syndrome for making videos, I was kind of being an imposter in my own life because everybody's seeing me as being so happy and so funny and whatever. I seem to have an easy life. I don't have to have a day job, you know, like living the dream. I was the only one who knew on the inside how deeply I was struggling. It just made me feel like a fraud on some subconscious level all the time. That's kind of like when people talk about shadow work. And I, since I did ayahuasca in 2022, I want to say, and then integrated that to 2023, I think it was. And now we're in 2024. We're coming up to almost two years after I did ayahuasca. And there's that shadow side that you don't, you can't look at. And I thought all these other superficial things were my shadow side, you know, bad habits, you know, being attracted to toxic men, the codependency, the people pleasing stuff. I thought all of that was my shadow side, but really like the real part of your shadow, that's going to be the key to your full healing, to step into yourself, to actualize yourself, to come into the full expression of yourself as a, as a human being on earth you're so ashamed of it and that's part of it and it's so hard to find it but if you get really really honest with yourself and you become committed enough to having a self-actualized life that you're not sleepwalking through and if that I mean like I said I am obsessed with becoming a youtuber it is the only job I'm willing to have in bringing my message to people I know what I want to do and it took a while to figure that out once I found out what I wanted to do and I kept feeling like there was like a magnetic field around it like pushing me and bouncing me off of it every time I got so close I got pushed back and the computer would work and this and that it's just like no I want to do this so bad and having that burning desire to do something the pain of staying the same finally outweighed the pain of changing and when you reach that point in your life I think that's 
where you can actually get like really honest with yourself. There were a couple other things that played into this. I got re-diagnosed basically with ADHD and there was something of the floodgates breaking with that. And like, as far as perfectionism, I think self-hate and perfectionism are really closely linked together because it's like on the outside, if you can just be perfect, then somehow you'll think that's like a bomb that will quiet this inner voice that hates you so much. Something with being re-diagnosed with ADHD and admitting I needed medication kind of, I think, broke open the ability for me to admit these things about myself because it was kind of the first time where I was like, you know what, I need help. So admitting I needed help and I had something going on was kind of the first step. And then my mind kind of like popped open. And I don't know if it was the ADHD medicine or like more psychic things going on with me. I think releasing the need to be perfect for the first time in my life and admitting I needed some psychiatric help and medicine. I'm like an anti-medicine, anti-doctor person. So that was a, a really big shift for me because a big part of why I stopped taking my medicine and kind of forgot, it's like the most ADHD thing you can ever do, by the way, is forget that you were diagnosed with ADHD. Basically forgot I was diagnosed with ADHD because uh, people around me had stigmatized me from taking medicine and basically made me feel like I just wanted to be on drugs. So I felt really stigmatized when I was on medication and it, and again, the people pleasing, the self-hatred, the perfectionism, living your life for other people. I stopped taking medicine. I never looked back. And just part of it, part of me that was kind of just like, whatever. Okay, so people think I just want to be on drugs. Good. Let them think that because I need to be on drugs to write my book. If I need to be on drugs to write my book, so be it. Finally, like I said, I'm not a medicine person. I'm all natural. I don't go to doctors. And it was just like, well, you know what? Needing to bring these messages and, and, and this, this help to people is finally higher on my list of priorities than whatever notions of a, what proper behavior is. So I, yeah, I got on medicine and then like the floodgates totally opened and then I sat down to make that video because, you know, I was on medicine. So I was like being way more productive and I sat down to make that video and then I admitted that I was fat and ugly to you guys and the floodgates completely opened up. I actually wrote a script because I dictated the content of this video today as I was driving because I was thinking about it and so I voice texted it into my notes and this is the note, a structure. I'll just go through these notes. I, I struggle staying on topic and it really affects people's ability to get value out of my videos. I'm trying to bring a lot of value to you guys in my videos. I want to share what I've been through in life and the realizations that I've had to help you get to yours, period. And if I could help you get there faster with more grace with yourself, not like grace as far as like being graceful, you know, if you don't wanna have too much grace, you won't be able to stand for all my Seinfeld fans. I speak in Seinfeld, so that, that's from Seinfeld. You know, have grace with yourself, be kind to yourself. If, if I can help you navigate your healing journey with more kindness towards yourself, I'm gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry, but it's really important to me. It's important to me to figure out how to make videos that people can get value from it and stick through. So I'm trying to learn how to script. This is the first time I've really done this. So I'm trying really hard here. <sighs> if you hate your life, do this. Admit it. I've never been satisfied. I have never been satisfied by myself and I've always felt defective. I have my life goals list from when I was 12 years old. I think the first thing might be get a million dollars. I've always had huge dreams and huge goals and those have required huge things for me that I for my whole life didn't know if I'd ever be able to unearth my true potential. I knew that I could reach all those goals. I knew it when I was 12. I knew it when I was young, but everything I went through in life and all the trauma just buried me. And it's, it's sad to think about the little girl who made that list and the little girl all the times before that and that if I hadn't done everything I did, I could have totally lost that in my life. So I feel like it helps to think about yourself as a little girl. I did a lot of, a lot of this started with inner child healing work. I'm gonna bring you guys through. I'm gonna do standalone videos on all this. If you could picture yourself as a little girl and then just Talk to her about what she deserves. That can be very healing. It healed me so much. I did this with my hypnotherapist. Hypnotherapy saved my life. YouTube saved my life. And I saved my own life, really. Not from dying, but from sleepwalking through life, which that's my worst nightmare. Like a life unlived. Whew. I have so much inside of me. And there was a chance that it was never going to come out. And that's really scary. 
So I really have to say, like, until a month and a half ago, I hated myself so much that I couldn't do anything in my life. And I just want to help you guys figure out how to climb out of that hole because nobody deserves to live like that. Really. And if I could even help one person out of what I went through. I've helped my kids. I've raised my kids right. So that's been very healing. That was just one line of this. Codependency issues, self-esteem issues, trauma in my childhood led me to accepting scraps and being grateful for them. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. This turned into a life of sabotaging myself and abandoning myself with substances, people, and thought forms, and overall self-concept, and my beliefs, and my worldview. Good things were for other people. I accepted the scraps and was grateful for that, and I thought that that was virtuous. This was my turning point. This was right. This is, this is what led me to going to do ayahuasca actually, because I went to the desert and of course met this guy on Tinder. (laughs) I went to the desert for a past life regression hypnosis, a Dolores Cannon QHHT past life regression hypnosis. If you're familiar, that all snowballed into me meeting this guy, going to do ayahuasca at the place he had gone. I never met him, but we kept in touch like on Instagram. I went to his shaman to do ayahuasca back in California. Then I bought all this land in California. Like it's a whole, it's a whole arc that I'm more than happy to tell you guys all about. I'll walk you through everything, but I told this hypnotherapist that she did like this whole intake. Oh my goodness, Juana. I'll link her information below in case you want to get in touch with a real healer. I told a hypnotherapist during my past life regression session that I am trying to give so much to these people who abandoned me and I don't need anything. That's what I was saying when I was talking about my ex. I'm like, I'm just giving. I can give and give and give and I don't, I don't even need anything. And she was like, you don't need anything? What, what's that? What do you need? And I was like, that part right there right that that was that was the part that was wrong (laughs) yeah uh okay just thinking back to myself two years ago I think I need a tissue so thinking back to myself two years ago that I was sitting in California and I would say that kind of stuff to somebody it hurts me for myself and it also hurts me for humanity that other people are in that position and they don't know how to get out of it saying that to her she really she really helped me so much hypnosis I'll do another I'm gonna do probably my next video about hypnosis because Kate Middleton says she used it so I'm assuming people are gonna start searching for it but yeah I became like dear friends with my hypnotherapist I just left there this morning so yeah she said you don't need anything in that moment my whole life changed it just took a few more years of hard work and faith on top of that realization to come to the realization that I'm telling you now there can be moments in your life that are profound and life-changing but there's a delay in 3d reality so you need to hold your faith and your vibration for a certain amount of time before it begins to manifest in your world that experience and then the ayahuasca and then every other thing I've done which I will get into at length in the video so please subscribe if if you're interested in all of this stuff and thank you so much for just listening to the video and if it helps you please hit the video with a like so that it can help other people who need to hear this find it do I have something in the corner of my mouth I will literally die I don't even care this video was really hard to make I've been making like silly funny videos like but it's like really hard for me to like find my real voice on here so I hope that this helps somebody there's a 3d delay in the world for your manifestations and your your thoughts to become things so this really did all hit the self-hatred realization and the, the letting out and releasing that, like the cord cutting of that, really did take two years. It took a few more years of hard work and faith to come here. So you need to hold your faith and vibration for a certain amount and just have faith in yourself. You don't have to have faith in anything else than yourself. I hated my life so much that there wasn't really another option, so I went full force into having faith. I didn't know what else to do. So I just decided from everything I saw on YouTube, I just hold my thoughts and be grateful and be positive and write my gratitude things and do my affirmations. I just did it all. Just hoping. I I just trusted these YouTubers, the wizard Liz, all the big ones, all the little ones. I just trusted my gut, my faith, what I had seen. Plant medicine helps you to like connect with everything. So things seem, you understand things more and you, you have more faith. I don't know. It's hard to describe. I had seen enough evidence to prove that faith was worth having. So I threw everything I had at my dream life. And now I'm starting to see it materialize all around me. And it started inside my mind. That is the only place where it started and the only place where it's happening. I felt like I was ready to peel my skin off. It was like my soul was like atrophying into myself. You know, I had to grow. I had to grow and it was like almost like a butterfly, right? When they burst out of their cocoon, I didn't know this. 
But when a butterfly is in its cocoon and it has to get out, if it has any help getting out of that cocoon, it won't develop the strength that it needs in its wings to fly. I think that's pretty profound. And I think at the point where you're the closest to realizing your deepest pain and breaking through that deepest pain to open up the floodgates of your life, that's when it feels most painful. That's when it's the scariest. It's darkest before the dawn kind of thing. That's when it feels the most constrictive. But you are the only person who can save yourself out of this. And if anyone else helps you, you won't develop the strength to go on to the next levels where you need to go. So these are like very serious spiritual growing pains that I had to go through to be able to find my voice, clear my throat chakra, throat chakra healing, all that, all that hippie stuff. I was so tired of the things I wanted to do, but for some reason I wasn't capable of doing. I realized I had built everything. I had built so much and worked so hard and I actually enjoyed working. So it wasn't a matter of being a bad worker and it wasn't a matter of being lazy. So what on earth could be the reason for all this? As usual, it was always a matter of losing 15 pounds and then my life would be on the other side of that, but I never really lost 15 pounds for good because it all kept coming back over and over again. I felt so ashamed of myself. I felt so ashamed of myself and my skin and I felt so ashamed that I was falling so far below my potential and I was the only person who knew. I was living a lie and it was making me sick with myself. I was disgusted with myself every day and I couldn't figure out why I was a piece of shit and the good things in the world were for other people. This is all stuff that started when I was really, really young. I accidentally stumbled into inner child healing work. Wait, I legit accidentally stumbled into inner child healing work, like instinctively, because I have a really deep, like a very strong connection to source. How sad is this? I was engaged and I was so excited and I got the Polly Pocket Bridal House. And the coolest thing was that when someone gave you these as a kid, I feel like people put batteries in them once. This, this one's always wonky. People put batteries in them once and then no adult puts batteries in them again for you because you like need a little screwdriver. But I was like, oh my God, these are my Polly Pockets and, and I could put the batteries in and, and, and I could get the little screwdriver and put new batteries in. Sorry, this is not a good look. But anyway, I bought my childhood toys again and I didn't know what I was doing. I, I it was just like, screw it. I can have this stuff now. I can, I can have what I want. And I don't know, it all like snowballed into all this stuff. So it really is just crazy. I was able to reach down to the part that loved myself before all this shit happened. I used hypnosis, meditation, therapy, journaling, EFT tapping, all of that. But I really got on this path. It feels like without trying, but obviously I did a lot. So it's, it's kind of like how everyone's success, every overnight success has 10 years behind it that you never saw. So it felt like an overnight success, but really it was just a culmination to all the, the work I had done on myself all this time. Uh, I had like this near death like car accident almost happen and I don't know everything just got like laser focused I don't know I'm a mom I don't know if you've ever lost your kid in a crowd <laughs> but you get this laser focus and the sound goes out of your ears and everything is like you don't even see in it doesn't your vision doesn't even move it's like in pictures it's like ching 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 like you're you're so messed up that you're seeing in frames, basically. There were a bunch of experiences that just brought everything right into focus. It saved my life and I would never have realized this. I was living my life at a very low level because that's where I thought I was at. That's what I thought of myself. As a mother, as a mother, it feels sacrilegious to admit that you hate your life. But I sat down to make a video and I never could because I wasn't pretty enough and if I did it, it wasn't enough. And who am I to think that somebody would wanna to listen to me and have anything to offer? I was trying to teach what I knew before I knew what I knew. I knew it was the truth and I wanted to share it people, but I wasn't walking the walk. So of course I felt like an imposter. I didn't realize this. I thought I was walking the walk, but of course, how am I gonna come on here and tell you guys how to love yourselves? Like, and how to glow up when it's like, you can't put lipstick on a pig. If you feel like crap underneath, like all this stuff is just band-aids. So now I realize why I couldn't come to you guys because I knew on the inside, I hadn't actually gotten there yet. But I have now, I have now, and I'm here to help you guys. There is nothing I wanted to do as bad as YouTube. I have so much life experience and I want to share it with people and teach them and entertain them. And I love it, but I couldn't do it. And I realized it was because I felt too fat and ugly to show up on YouTube. And I was constantly comparing myself to everybody else. And it was an easy way to stay stuck. So I sat down in front of my camera to admit I was fat and ugly, but I was here to make a YouTube video and everything changed in my life from that point on. I had no idea how much a self-hatred would hold me back. And I didn't have to do anything other than admit that. 
All the work I had done is what got me to face my final shadow. I thought I was doing the shadow work, but it wasn't really working. Now I realize it was just excavating down to the depths of self. It gave me courage, these baby steps, believing in myself and making little votes every day for myself. Admitting that I hated myself and, and that I could do what I wanted despite the messed up spot I was in. <laughs> I'm trying not to curse. Gave me the courage and the self-love to stand beside myself while I made these baby steps towards the life I wanted, like making mediocre YouTube videos. The production quality could be a lot better. I know, trust me. But I'm here with the message and you know, whoever it reaches, it reaches. I have full faith in myself now that with the new relationship I have with myself, I'll be able to, you know, stick at it and, and really do what I need to do. Honestly, I really did in my little rants hit all these notes that I had written down. <laughs> Every day when you make these baby steps, you're voting for your true self. You're voting for your dream life. You know, it's a vote of confidence in yourself. The way I show up now in my life is completely different. I'm no longer interested in dating. I only focus, I'm only focusing on my own goals. I don't feel unlovable and alone in the world anymore because now I finally have myself. When you don't have yourself, no matter how much else you have, you'll never have anything. So the way I show up in life now is totally different because I finally have myself now as an ally. When you don't love yourself, when you're abandoning yourself, no matter how much you have, you'll never have anything. And that's why my life always felt so empty. And I over-identified with parenting my children because I thought that maybe I could fix. I was trying to subconsciously like fix everything in me by doing everything perfect with them. But no matter how much you have and no matter how good you do for other people, until you're doing right by yourself, you'll have nothing, really. And everything you have will be a mirage. And I truly believe that. And I never would have realized that unless I'd watched thousands of YouTube videos about self-love, affirmations and all that. And I just, I just, I just trust it. And, and I, I, I watched the signs of the universe. I was guided by spirit and my soul and God and the universe. I was guided in a way where I was able to actually have trust and take those little tiny steps forward that feel so hard. I have faith in myself and every decision I made to take care of myself was a vote for my new life and it all, then it all clicked. So if you're going through hell, just keep going. If you're going through hell, just keep going. I've been there. I promise you. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to tell all the stories. Just trust. I've, I've honestly been there. I have lived a nightmare of a life and I can in hindsight say that it was all powered by hatred of myself that I did not create. It was things that happened that I internalized as a very young child, but it was what was running my entire life. Not all of our thoughts and beliefs about ourselves are our thoughts. They're mostly conditioned from other people around us as we grow up. They say, give me a child until age seven and I'll show you the man. This goes back to hypnosis, but you're, you're in a, a theta state until seven years old. That's why like little kids learn languages so easily and you're like a sponge. And then that kind of that theta wave state kind of closes and whatever you were programmed to be to age seven, that's what's gonna run your life until you take action and change it, really, heal it. It's basically like upgrading your software. You can go or re rewriting your code. You can get into that code and rewrite it. It's hard work, but it's worth it. It's actually the most worthwhile thing you could probably ever do for yourself in your life. It was time for me to reclaim my life and make my own opinion of myself. So I'm about to turn 39, so I decided, you know, you have to have a framework for your YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is all going to revolve around me throwing everything I have at my dream life this next year. I'm gonna turn 40 next year. I'm about to turn 39 in June. I want to throw everything at my dreams this year. I wanna grow this YouTube channel. I wanna get my body in shape. I wanna get my house done. I wanna get my kids reading a book a month, you know? So much, I'm so passionate, I have so much to I want to do. I am not as awesome as I want to be, but I love myself enough to know I can get there and I love myself enough to invest in myself in the ways like getting good nights of sleep and not watching TV all night and not using social media. I might only be one step ahead of you, but I've heard on YouTube that that's all I need. I just need to be able to help. I want to make content that would have helped my prior self because if you were that person, then there's plenty of other people that were your past version of yourself. So I'm here to talk to the past version of myself and I'll just keep crying if I say that, but like, I love you. You are good enough. 
you got this, you can do this, and you are worth doing this. You deserve to be your number one priority, just like other people are their number one priorities. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing different about you. That is what I needed someone to tell my prior self. I've, my therapist, my EFT tapping therapist, she she did that for me. It just took a while to, to get into it. What you resist persists, and what I was resisting was really admitting that I hated myself. I was ashamed and I was embarrassed and I didn't want to break the illusion for people who thought I was perfect. But what you resist will persist. Your entire dream life is waiting at the border of your comfort zone. It's really important to draw a line with yourself that you're not gonna live like that anymore and then step over it. I took a lot of baby steps, I took a lot of baby steps and I got there and I got there, but what that did was brought me to that line. And I had to really decide to step over it and start a new type of life. And that is what I'm committing to doing. And you know, it's a milestone birthday turning 40 and I just can't imagine how great it would feel. I can imagine because I do all the time, but like I can't imagine how great it would feel like going to my 40s, feeling better than I ever have in my entire life. I know you want to be so far ahead of where you are. I'll just read it. I know you want to be so far ahead of where you are. It's really hard how far away you are from that goal, but accepting it is the only way to move forward towards that goal. Pictures are hard to take when you feel fat, like progress pictures, but that's how you get to see how far you've come. Honestly, accepting that you hate yourself and hate your life, no matter how bad it is, it's what you have to admit. And no matter how bad the truth is, after you admit it, it's like releasing the pressure of that pain and releasing it outside of you so that you can do something with it. When it's stuck inside of you, it's stuck inside of you like a security vault. But when you excavate that feeling from your soul and your heart and your body, you put it into your hands. And in your hands, you can make something different with it. You can transmute it now. I think that's really profound. I really think that's true. Accepting that you hate yourself. When you excavate that little BB from the bottom of the triangle, when you finally admit and let that out, you take it out of your body, you take it out of your soul and your heart, and you put it into your hands. And that truth in your hands that you hate yourself, this is where you can throw it away. <laughs> and you can really transmute it. You can do something with it at that point. And I think that that's very profound. I wrote that this morning. It's counterintuitive that thoughts about hating yourself would lead to thoughts about loving yourself, but everything has a light and dark side in this world. Everything is ruled by a dichotomy of energies, feminine, masculine, yin, yang, night, day, life, death. I feel like when manuel Miranda, is this Hamilton? <laughs> I was gonna say, is this Madison? <laughs> But trust me on this one, when you get real about the parts that you hate, you will open up the door to be able to love. And you can step through that door for the first time in your life. I'm the happiest I've been in my entire life, all because of this realization. And I've tried to outrun it so many times and I finally just surrendered to where I was in life. Acceptance. And then I'll tell you a little story about acceptance with my son's AirPod to, to end the video. You can only start where you are. So if your mind is always outside of you in the future or your ideas are too far ahead, you can't get there because you need to embody this current version of yourself and really take a long, hard look in the mirror, even if it's painful, because nothing is as painful as living the rest of your life in a way that you hate. So you really have nothing to lose if you're at that point. I'm going to stay with myself and not abandon myself for this entire year. And I cannot wait to see what I can achieve once I have myself as an ally instead of an enemy. And I would love for you to follow on my journey and learn what works for me and what doesn't work for me and try some of these things out for yourself and share with me what works for you so we can grow and learn together. We're on a reinvention journey and we love to see it. It really opened up the floodgates of honesty with myself and with other people too. I'm a chronic white lie teller. I'm a liar. I'm a chronic white lie teller because I'm always worried about saving people's feelings, but it is so much easier just to be transparent and honest and let the people who don't want to be around you leave your life. You don't need people in your life who you need to pussyfoot around and you don't need to pussyfoot around yourself. Being honest with yourself and getting real, it's like a straight as the crow flies. It's the quickest way. It's the point A to point B. It's the fastest way to actualizing your potential in your best life. Yeah, you can get to Las Vegas from driving from New York down to Maryland, down to Virginia, all the way down to Miami. You come back up through Florida, go through Louisiana and Alabama, up to Texas, over to New Mexico, up through California. Like, yeah, that'll get you to Las Vegas, but... It's not the best way to do it. Getting real with yourself is the crow's eye as the bird flies. Quickest route. GPS ways way to get to your best life. Perfectionism is procrastination and there's no two ways around that fact. I'm filming this video because I committed to myself and I'm committed to you guys. I want to show up for you guys and I want to build trust and I want to build a community and I want you guys to know that I'm here for you and that I'm really going to 
keep making more videos so that you can subscribe, like it, share it with people, and actually come back and really get value in your life. I, I want to help people. It could be better, but I know it could be worse, and it also could be non-existent. So this video is a gift to you and a gift to myself. And if you found this useful, please share the video with anybody that you think could benefit from it. I have to remember. And thank you guys. If, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I there's no way without crying that I could tell you how grateful I am. So I'm not going to go there because I think I cried enough in the video. Thank you for listening to this and being here. And thank you for showing up for yourself because everybody in humanity is elevated when we each individually show up to love ourselves. So thank you. Subscribe and hit the like button. Hey, yeah, yeah. come on, it's 2024. I mean, yeah, God, the universe, Reiki, all that. But like, follow, subscribe, it's free. <laughs> Hit the notification bell so you're notified when I make more videos on the journey so you can follow along. Let's do it together. I felt like I was on the outside looking in at everyone's normal life. Even during the ayahuasca ceremony, it felt like everyone else was getting healed except me and the shaman was with them and I was kind of like on the outside looking in of everyone else getting healed and I'm like, well, I'll be damned. But then I actually wound up healing a lot through a couple other people's experiences. And then, of course, a shaman came over to me. And then the next, actually, the next night, I asked to be on the altar because I knew I needed extra help. I told the shaman that I was so sad, that I was carrying, like, the deepest sadness inside of me and I needed more help. And he took me up with him. And that was, like, I'll do a whole standalone video on the ayahuasca thing. But I advocated for myself. A closed mouth doesn't get fed. But when you hate yourself, you don't feel worthy of the things that other people are worthy of. So, like I said, you... You accept the scraps and you feel grateful and that's sad. Nobody should live like that besides my ex. <laughs> I'm joking. Then I realized by healing other people and watching other people healing, I was having a very profound healing effect on me. And of course, yeah, the shaman came over to me. Okay, now guys, real quick, a story about acceptance and releasing and just, yeah, accepting where you are. So my son has pretty severe ADHD just like me and he's got AirPods, so you do the math. Someone with ADHD, you might as well just give me AirPods and let me open them up and just drop them into the trash, one by one. Let's just get this over with, there's no AirPods. So of course, my son, he's 15, he has AirPods, he loses the one, and he's only on one AirPod, and teenagers only need one AirPod, so that was fine for a while, and then he lost the second AirPod. So I'm obviously not gonna buy him new AirPods, but then he had a dream about the AirPod, and whenever I have a dream about finding something I lost, I always find the thing. I turned this house upside down looking for that AirPod. He had a singing where he does a one-on-one -on -one thing where he sings this solo in a room with a judge and he gets uh, scored on his singing. It's pretty intense and it's pretty cool that he's willing to do all that work and you know, a 15 year old kid who's like, you know, extracurricular and hobby is singing, it's like pretty cute. So you know what, instead of flowers, what I should do is, I, cause I always get him flowers when he performs. Instead of flowers, I should get him a new set of AirPods. But you know, I don't really want to spend the money. I don't use my AirPods that much, only at the gym, but I'm happy with using my Air Maxes. So I was like, you know what I should do? I should give him my AirPods. And we could share them, but he'll be like so happy. So I take him off my keychain, I charge him up for him and everything. And I had opened up a drawer in my dresser that I never opened to grab a pair of jeans that I never wear. I don't wear jeans. Ugh, that's another thing about making videos. I always felt like I had to like look so much better. Screw it, this is what I wear. I had this drawer open that I would never normally open. And on the day I decided to give him my AirPods, there was his AirPod in a drawer. It must have fallen out when I was folding laundry. Who the hell knows what happened? I like almost feel like a ringing in my ears. I've had a lot of profound things happen in my life, a lot. But this was like somehow one of the most profound things that ever happened. And I think it goes to make a very important point. When you resolve something, that's when you open up your energy to receive what you need. I can't think of a better example than that because it just happened yesterday and it was like, oh my God, I did something generous. I was, you know, doing something nice and it's just, and then that AirPod after a year showed up. So like, I don't know, it was just too much of a coincidence to ignore. And I think it really, I think the lesson is very profound that when you let something go and accept where you're at with something, that's really when you can soar like an eagle. I had a dream about an eagle the other night. Oh, that was a majestic dream about this bald eagle. I'm very connected to nature. <laughs> Don't even get me in a car. Don't even get me started on the trees. It's a whole thing. Like I said in my manifesto, <laughs> if this video was helpful, please make sure to like it and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I make my other videos. I'm gonna make a video about how hypnosis and the different types of hypnosis I've done. Cause I've done a few different types of hypnosis and I'm really close with my hypnotherapist and 
it changed my entire life. And Kate Middleton used it. Princess Kate, she's alive. Thank you. If you made it to the end of this video, my most sincere thank you. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you. And I want to get you to a point where you appreciate yourself too. Because I used to be there hating myself. And I'm not anymore. And I, I honestly just, it was just like an overnight change and it just happened like a month ago and then you kind of get scared you're like i had a couple of days where i felt really bad about myself and i'm like wait what happened to the new lease on life but no no trust me once you break through that wall you'll you can get there and you'll see what i'm talking about yeah i, I thought that that was for other people but it's not it's for everyone and the only thing that would cause you to think it was for other people and not you is trauma conditioning from other people who told you bad things about yourself that weren't true but I'm here to tell you what's true you're amazing you got this follow me follow me on the journey I'm gonna turn 40 whatever <laughs> all right guys sorry I cried but it's cool and I'll see you in the next one thank you so much I'm really proud of myself for making this video and buying myself a computer that's good enough to edit it bye